Well, it's April the 16th, 2012, and we're here doing a little bit of um, a video clip about Eshop Pageant, um, which took place at Eshop Hall in 1947. It was actually in June 1947, and it's something I've been interested in for a long time, after hearing Mum tell me about how she went to Eshop Pageant when she was a girl. Um, but it's only recently, last year, that we managed to find out a little bit more about it by going to Eshel's and talking to Hilda Jeffrey who gave us a wonderful collection, let me copy her wonderful photo album um, that she collected from the pageant. Um, and I've got the photos to show you here on screen. And then meeting Elsie Wheeler who um, amazingly has a little film clip, a very short film clip of the pageant which I'm going to show you at the end. So if we go to the next um, brochure here that we've got which explains really what the pageant was about. It was actually to celebrate the centenary of the granting of the Charter of Incorporation to Bradford. So it's not specifically related to Eshult or anything to do with Eshult. The uh, Eshult pageant was just part of the centenary celebrations. So um, the Charter of Bradford in 1847 and then celebrations in 1947. So um, Hilda has got um, a wonderful letter that was sent to um, Mr. Arrell with a copy of the actual brochure. Hilda has a brochure of the pageant and of the day's events saying that it was a garden fete for the sewage committee's tenants. And then there's a wonderful detailed programme of all the events starting at 2 o'clock, buses were leaving Bradford, the Lord and Lady Mayor, etc. They're arriving at Eshel Hall. They do some tree planting, inspect the gardens, then they have tea on the lawn and then um, the tenants occupy chairs on the lawn after tea and then there's Morris dancing and then there's um, historical cameos which we're going to talk about more in a minute at 7.30. Then cups of tea, then dancing on the lawn to the music of the city police band and then at 9.45 God Save the King because of course it was George VI who was on the throne at the time. And then here we've got Morris dancing by the children, crowning of the May Queen, and some more May Paul dancing here. So that's super, isn't it? <coughs> and then the cameos that we've got on Elsie's film clip um, really give the history of Eshult and how it was handed over to Bradford Corporation. So we'll go more into that um, later. Um, and it's saying thanks very much here to various people. Mr. Arrell for producing the historical cameos. Mrs. Kimball is the training the children. Reverend Clark, who was the Eshel vicar at the time. Miss Jennings, headmistress of Tom Park School, for loan of the Maple. <coughs> right. Here's the first photo that Hilda gave me. It's a great shot taken from inside Eshel Hall, looking out over the beautiful gardens. And you can see everybody lining up here ready and the stage um, getting set here for the historical cameos. And here's um, everybody getting ready for the um, crowning of the May Queen, Joan Donaldson. You'll see on the next slide some of the names we've managed to put in here. We've got Reverend Clark, we've got Frankie Wheeler here and Jeff Smith, we've got Joan Donaldson, the May Queen, uh, little Carol Jeffrey here, uh, Stanley Greenwood looking cute in his shorts. We think this is Joan's mum, Margaret Donaldson. And then the next slide shows Joan here on her um, crown and all the attendants. I think on the next slide, Phil, this, we've identified this is my relative Linda Towland here, so I need to fill that in. And we've got the children again here. We've got Stanley, Heather. We've got Jean Giblin here. We've got Margaret Jeffrey. I think this is Anne Pearson, actually, so I need to fill that one in. Jeff and Frankie again. Carol. So we've gone to the next slide. This is, these are the photos related to the historical cameos. And on the next slide, we'll see that this is my relative Marjorie Williams. We've got Cyril Wordswick. We think this is Hilda Myers and this is Betty Booth. Um, and this is a great shot of them. Uh, Reg Smith here getting his, his makeup ready. On the next slide here, we've got Alwyn Mortimer. Alwyn played two parts. He played part of a monk and the part of an old man. We'll see him in a minute. I think this is Norman Myers. We've got Betty Boo, Barbara Leach. I think this is Hilda Myers. Not sure about these two. Makeup man and Reg Smith. On the next slide, another shot of them all. And you're beginning to see the parts they play, which will be more um, obvious in the film clip in a minute. 
is uh, Alwyn again on the next slide. It tells us the name. So we've got um, Hilda, Barbara, Betty, Alwyn, Norman, Cyril, Charlie Wilson, Kathleen Autry, uh, Margaret Anakin and Reg. Uh, a lovely shot of them all here. This is a really super shot of them all lined up. Here's Alwyn again playing the part of an old man. So on the next slide we've got Alwyn, Rob Myers, Herbert Harrell, Reg Smith, Norman Myers, Tommy Wilson, Charlie Wilson, uh, Marjorie Williams, Cyril Wordswick, Barbara Leach, Rosemary Booth, Margaret Anakin, Joan Ives, the mother superior, Betty Booth, we've got Jack Williams, my relative, Margaret Leach, Margaret Jeffrey, the unknown dog, we've got Jane Arrell, Marjorie Williams, here's Ernest Barker, and then back to Alwyn. Right, this is the crowning of the May Queen, a little bit out of order, but uh, I think this is the Lady Mayoress on the next slide. Um, um, we think that's the Lord Mayor's wife. Stanley again in his little shorts. Joan, Jeff Smith, Brian Raystrick, I think, at the back there. Carol Jeffrey looking lovely at the front. Another one. Um, and on the next slide, more of the same names. So I think this is Kenneth Eggy. I'm not sure if I've got his name right. Um, our Linda there again. More of the same names, Jean Gibbling. Jeff Smith just looking out from behind. On the next slide, this is lovely now, they're all parading through. You can see all the people back there in the chairs. Uh, little Stanley at the front with his cushion, Joan, uh, and all the attendants. Dorothy Jensen, we think that is. More of the same names again. Um, right here, we've got Hilda actually. Hilda's helping get everybody ready here. Um, I think that's Marion Smith. Um, anybody who, who has any more names, I'm not sure of this gentleman in the hat. If they could let me know, that would be fantastic. Right, so that's all the photographs. So we're going to show the clip now um, from Elsie. Um, there's no sound and it's a little bit jerky. So what we'll do is I'll go through it and we'll pause it where we can and try and point people out. But it's hard to spot who's who in their uh, costumes. Right, so it starts off then with the story of Eschelt. And it says historical details by Stanley Scott, script by Miss Elizabeth Rose, the pattern produced by A. Channel. Uh, Photographed and produced in natural colour by F.J. Dewhurst. This lady, we don't know who she is, she's obviously introduced in the pageant. And then it starts off saying, Low nestling in the Vale of Air, a peaceful hall, storm sheltered rest, beneath its roof breathes history, dreams, its walls, serenity invest. Those dreams unfolded, here we see, here is recaptured purity. So we've got scene one here, and then there's a bit of information. 11.72, Sir Simon Ward and his lady present the lambs of Eshel to the Cistercian Order of the Nunnery. And then walking on here. <coughs> now we're not sure who's who here, so if anybody's watching can shed any light on it, that would be very good. We're not sure who this chap is here. Reg Smith, um, here in red. Um, Hilda Myers, we think there. Um, Reg Smith again, not sure of this young man. Um, right, scene two, we've got 1539, Commissioners of Henry VIII demand the surrender of the nunnery to the King at the dissolution of the religious houses. I think this is Betty Booth. What's the number here, then? Uh, I think this is Betty Booth. There's three nuns actually. Um, uh, Joan Ives' mother superior. And then the other two nuns are Kathleen Autry and Margaret Anakin. I'm not sure if anybody knows which is which here. And then what's going to happen now is um, there's a really good scene where Alwyn, who was one of the only people who could ride a horse, um, had to play two parts. He plays the part of a monk and he has to come thundering on 
and then stop the horse dead and jump off and he does it perfectly it's quite quick so you'll have to watch out for him doing it now it's really good so Alwyn comes thundering on <laughs> brilliant <laughs> we've got Joe Knives here Mother Superior right here we have um, not sure who these two are not sure of this young man here in his uh, finery the three nuns of the fair we've got Margaret and the King Kathleen Autry and Betty Booth not sure again who that is not sure who this chap is right scene three 1706, so Walter Carvey explains to his mother, with the aid of his chief mason, his plans for building Eshel Hall. Right, this is my relative here. We've got Marjorie Williams, and we've got, I'm sure this is Ernest Barker, looking at the photos, that's Ernest. I'm sure Kath or Andrew will confirm it. Here's Marjorie. This is my relative Jack Williams, I'm pretty certain that's Jack. Right, scene four, 1755, so Walter Carvely Blackett meets Mr. Robert Stansfield at the Paper Hall Bradford to discuss the sale of the Eshel Estate. This is Jack again. Played another part. And we wonder if that was a no, maybe it's Reg Smith, we're not sure. Yeah, that's Reg Smith, I think. I'm not sure who this young man in red is. We did think it might be Norman Lyon. Oh no, I think that's Jack Williams again looks like Jack, I'm not sure. Not sure of him. Right, scene 5, 1875, Lieutenant Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Constance Stanfield and his family receive information regarding his Chancery Court action to obtain an injunction against the Bradford Corporation with regard to their disposal of sewage into the River Air. And here we've got the fabulous Eshel Stagecoach. It's really great to see the Eshel Stagecoach because we're not sure what's happened to it, but that's another story in itself. Um, now then, Phil, we've bought this lady. We recognise, but I can't think who it is. Um, I think that there's Carol, Jeffrey there. Not sure of these young ladies. Not sure of this lady here in black. Not sure of this young man. Who is that now? Is it Mildred Autry, I wonder? Here we have somebody else arriving on a horse. Can't see if it's Alwyn. Not sure of him. Scene 6. So we're finishing off now. 1906, the Mrs. Stansfield bid farewell to the Eshel Estate on its being taken over by the Bradford Corporation. Their exit is followed by the entrance of the Chairman, Deputy Chairman and Engineer of the Corporation, discussing the details of the new sewage works to be erected on the estate. Now then, we think that this is Margaret Anakin. Not sure of the dog. Yes, yeah, I, think, I think that's Margaret. Reg Smith again with his stick. Jack Williams. Scene 7. Brings us up to 1947, the City of Bradford centenary celebrations at Eshel Hall. And then we've got the children dancing around the maypole here, and all the audience appear to be enthralled. 
And now Elsie Wheeler is dancing, but I don't know if you can be able to pick her out. Here's the Lady Mayoress, um, waiting to um, crown the May Queen, to crown the Queen. Here we are with Joan and the children that we saw earlier on the photograph. <laughs> uh, right back to the Maypole dancing. Trained by Mrs. Kimberley. So Elsie Wheeler is dancing. I'm not sure which she is. I'll have to ask Elsie again about that. And um, Mum's cousin Leonard Townen said he was dancing that day, but I can't quite pick Leonard out. I'll have to show this to him and see if uh, he can spot himself. So any information about the kids would be great. And here's the fabulous maypole. You don't see many of them these days. Look that belt with the ribbons. to Joan Donaldson again with her attendants and they're all getting ready to leave now um, now that she's been crowned so uh, I think that's Carol Jeffrey Stanley I think that's Anne Pearson oh no that's Anne that's Anne Pearson Not sure about the dark haired girls. And that was Rita, I think. Glorious of the past of thine, within thee born and nourished. Now by our city's band and care, shall break fame for thee be bred. Thy dreams become reality in calm eternal purity. The end. So that's the uh, end of the film clip, so um, if we find any more information what I'll probably do is do a, a part two of this video and do an update. So I hope you've enjoyed it, let me know.